This is Suriname, a former Dutch colony. It's almost three quarters the size of Great Britain, but has a population below half a million. In 1667, the Dutch traded New York for Suriname with the British. Anxious to make the most of Suriname's great economic potential, the Dutch brought West African slaves to work the sugarcane plantations. The lucky ones escaped to the forest. Deep in the jungle, they preserved their African culture untouched for over three centuries. But this unique cultural heritage is now under serious threat. Logging, poaching, and gold prospecting have arrived in their jungle. Independent since 1975, Suriname is one of the most sparsely populated countries in the world, with the highest number of ethnic groups. You have the uh, indigenous people, the Amerindians, you have the uh, Bush Negro cultures, which are really uh, unique in the world now. It's a unique and wonderful mix that's certainly not found anywhere else in South America, and I don't think anywhere else in the world. Most people in Suriname live along the coast. In the interior, indigenous Indians share the forest with the descendants of escaped African slaves. Some 20,000 people live in tribal communities in one of the world's key regions for nature conservation. In the 17th century, Dutch colonizers established large sugarcane plantations along Suriname's main rivers. These plantations were the dot-coms of their day. To boost sugar production, African slaves were brutally snatched from their homeland to work here. But some newly arrived slaves managed to escape and found refuge alongside Indians in the dense interior. They earned the nickname Maroons from the Spanish word Thimaron, meaning wild or untamed. For over three centuries, their original way of life helped them survive. It developed into a unique African culture. But their self-imposed exile is ending. A world hungry for resources is now casting covetous eyes on this forgotten corner of South America. Foreign investment companies are targeting land that for centuries was home to Maroons and Indians. But can poverty-stricken Suriname resist the pressure for short-term profit and much-needed cash and preserve both its natural resources and indigenous cultures? Corneli Oliveira is a successful businesswoman descended from African slaves. She owns a clothing shop and beauty salon in the capital, Paramaribo. She may live in the city, but feels very strongly about the welfare and survival of the Maroon communities. Traditionele Maroon gemeenschappen worden bedreigd. Um, er worden concessies uitgegeven dwars door Maroon gemeenschappen en uh, inheemse, en de gemeenschappen van inheemse, dus dat is een, uh, een groot probleem. Als er zo ondeskundig mee omgegaan wordt, dan denk ik dat we binnenkort uh, heel weinig bos hebben. Suriname is part of the Guyana Shield. According to Conservation International, this shield is the biggest undisturbed expanse of tropical rainforest left on Earth. One of the few places where you can still see rare species like the blue frog, cock of the rock, and the giant otter. Suriname is fortunate in that it still has about 80 to 90 percent, probably closer to 90 percent of its original forest cover. It's the highest percent rainforest, tropical rainforest cover of any, uh, any country on earth. And if you just think about it in terms of uh, ecosystem services, Suriname and Guyana are the two countries that have the highest per capita availability of fresh water. Deep in the heart of Suriname is the Central Nature Reserve. 
It's the equivalent of more than one and a half million football pitches of virgin rainforest. In November 2000, it was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The reserve lies partly in the traditional hunting territory of the Quinty, one of the six major maroon tribes. Quinty Maroons have been granted limited hunting rights north of the reserve. The reserve management also gives them jobs, guarding the park and guiding tourists. With the largest area of protected tropical forest in the world and 16 other reserves covering 13% of the country, Suriname has exceeded internationally agreed targets for nature conservation. There's real potential for ecotourism. Suriname is a, in a very privileged location. It's, uh, it's very close to the world's largest uh, source of ecotourists, the United States, and uh, it's easy to get to. It's, um, it's got a lot of attractions. You can get out into uh, unbroken rainforest wilderness with about, within about 45 minutes. But with 70% of its population below the poverty line, Suriname is poor compared to its neighbors, and revenues promised from ecosystem services have yet to materialize. For cash-strapped governments, timber and minerals are a far easier source of income. And with the world running out of timber, this corner of South America is attracting growing attention. Asian timber companies have their eyes on Suriname. Ten years ago, Malaysian and Indonesian companies were given limited concessions to log the country's virgin rainforest. By 2000, Asians were by far the biggest exporters of Surinamese roundwood. I think that we nu bezig zijn of onze overheid bezig is uitverkoop te houden van onze bossen. Er is nu een issue over uh, het afstaan van uh, duizenden hectares bos aan uh, een Chinese maatschappij die aan houtkap zou doen, maar daarnaast alles wat hij leeggekapt zou hebben zou beplanten met palm voor de oliepalmindustrie. En uh, we houden ons hard vast. The Chinese have a long connection with Suriname. As early as 1853. Chinese families arrived here from Dutch Indonesia. Their descendants feel Surinamese and are an integral part of local society. Recently, a new wave of Chinese arrived from the mainland. In 2003, a Chinese firm, China Zongheng Tai, offered to invest in local palm oil production. It wanted a concession to log 40,000 hectares of rainforest to make way for palms. In an unprecedented concession to social accountability, the Surinamese government agreed to discuss the plan in a public meeting. The targeted area is worth $80 million if they sell only the most valuable trees for timber. If the area is cleared and turned over to palm oil, its value rockets to $400 million. It's not difficult to see why governments are happy to see tropical forest turned over to other uses. The discussions were heated, with environmental worries and concerns about the real aims of the Chinese company. I don't think that the Dorsney Surinamer is enthusiastic over it. The enthusiast over is that uh, the Chinese with our hot blocks are going to go. We as a folk don't see anything from it. We, we varen er niet wel bij. We hebben niet het gevoel dat we er wel bij varen. Wij denken in Dachtig Berjaya dat het hen uh, in eerste en laatste instantie gaat om ons hout. De vraag die nog beantwoord moet worden is hoe visible is palmolie op dit moment in de wereld. En wanneer die vraag niet beantwoord kan worden, wanneer die vraag beantwoord wordt met, uh, met negatief of met nee of uh, negatief, dan weet u bij, bij voorbaat dat. That whole story, in fact, does not On paper, 
The contract obliges the Chinese company to set up a viable palm oil industry and not just cut down trees and leave. It is clearly given that everything in phase must happen. Every phase that is afgestoot or has begun, there is the regering, the government, control over. And as not the forwarders fall down, then goes the third or the fourth phase, or even the beginning goes not through. Whatever the public concerns, they didn't impress the government in Paramaribo. In January 2004, the National Assembly approved the Chinese deal, giving the company exclusive rights over a 38-year period. Palm oil production has already decimated large tracts of Asian rainforest. Does the same future await Suriname? I think what they're issuing now are relatively small concessions. It's a choice whether you want to maintain these uh, resources for the future or whether you want to uh, basically liquidate them. Whether you liquidate them uh, quickly or a little more slowly, you're, you're ultimately liquidating them because they are not uh, really, truly, in, a, in, a, in any meaningful sense, uh, renewable resources. The public debate was in the capital, Paramaribo, far from the Maroons who claim traditional rights to the forest. Various indigenous groups have got together to form a treaty committee. They say the government should have consulted tribal people first. Wanneer je over binnenland wil onderhandelen, dan moet u bij ons komen dat we bij de Gramma gaan. Want we hebben genoeg, we hebben genoeg van die politieke gedoe in Suriname. There's still a wide economic gap between people in the coastal areas and tribal communities in the forest. The government hopes the new Chinese deal will bring jobs and infrastructure to the interior. The Chinese company says it'll even build a new city and harbour close to the concession site. I know that there are also with these groups and also conversations to be carried out to show them that this project, let me say, will also be for them in the Netherlands to be able to develop development. The crunch problem is differing views between the government and Maroons over legal rights. Treaties dating back to the 17th and 18th centuries, drawn up by the Dutch, granted tribal communities rights to their land. For many Maroons, these treaties are still valid. They see themselves as rightful guardians of the whole interior. It says also here clearly, this man, the the bedoelde, the older for dragon. Hun rechtsgeldigheid, hun rechtsgeldigheid en machtsgeldigheid werden niet herroepen. En precies zoals talloze andere oude wettelijke regelingen van na 1975 werd overgenomen, geldt geld dit ook voor deze traktaten. De verdragen zijn weliswaar verouderd, maar de geest en de intentie ervan is nog van betekenis. To the government, they're an unwelcome relic of a colonial past. That the tractaten zijn, die zijn er, maar of ze nou geldig zijn, ik 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 zou het op dit moment niet weten. Het is dus misschien iets voor voor juristen, iets voor de universiteit. The Maroons living in Suriname's rainforest have six main tribes. For each tribe, the highest authority is the Granman, a tribal chief whose power lasts a lifetime. The Granman is. Baas is hoofd van het binnenland, niemand anders. Maar de minister die komen, zowel baas komen, komen spelen voor de voor de uh, voor de grama. Zij moet zelf de de grama zelf een plaats geven. Hoeveel meter ze hebben, hoeveel kilometer ze hebben. Dat kan niet. Wie, wie, wie ben jij? Wie is de minister? Die minister is voor vier jaar benoemd. Wij moeten zelf de minister kiezen. Hij komt ons vragen om voor hem te stemmen. En wanneer voor die mensen hebben gestemd, stemt, dan komt die baas voor je spelen. Dat kan niet. Je bent voor vier jaar, maar de grammaat is voor vier, voor leven lang. Dat willen wij niet hebben meer. After a long civil war that raged through the 80s, a peace treaty was signed in 1992. This treaty recognized indigenous land rights. Unfortunately, there's still no agreement about the exact nature of these rights. In an effort to accommodate tribal needs, the government promised them 10 seats in Suriname's national parliament. They have the Bosnian, they have the people from Benenland believed, on paper said, 10 seats. We have to come to the table to talk about these 10 seats. But they say this gives them no real influence over the future of the forest. 
Die bosnegen wordt kopi uh, kopinaat en die indianen. Wij hebben recht op die dingen. Kijk op die Nederlands geeft ons hulp. Zogenaamd uh, ben, uh, ben, uh, binnenland uh, hulp. En uh, er een uh, fonds. Dit ding is door ons, door de traktaatcommissie, heeft haar majesteit geschreven. En toen meneer Pronk hier was gekomen, is met mijn brief, is met mijn brief naar Suriname gekomen. De Nederlandse regering heeft hem gestuurd met mijn brief naar Suriname te komen. En de, die mensen, wanneer, wanneer dat geld is gekomen, dan neemt Surinaamse dat geld, Surinaamse regering dat geld, maar die, dat geld komt niet aan ons. Dat wil baas voor ons komen spelen. En dat willen wij niet meer hebben. Dat ding moet voor binnenland blijven. En binnenland moet die dingen zelf beheersen. Want wij pinaren. Wij kunnen niet aan ons soort trek komen. With bitter disagreement over who can exploit the forest, renewal of civil strife can never be ruled out. When the Surinamese government granted a gold prospecting concession to a foreign multinational in 1995, the two sides clashed. The Maroon village of New Coffee Camp faced relocation, and villagers blocked the entrance to the site. So the first pit uh, that will be in production, uh, the name of the pit will be Pecaro, and it's going to be right here in front of us. All the mountains you saw there, that this is going to be the area of the first pit. In 2002, Rosebell Gold Mines, a subsidiary of the Canadian multinational Cambiore, was given a 25-year renewable right to mine for gold. The mill will be ready to work uh, beginning of next year, January. We'll do some tests to start really the production uh, in uh, February 2004. Fortunately, Negotiations between Rosebell Gold Mines, the government and Maroons headed off trouble. New coffee camp can't be relocated without consulting traditional village leaders. Rosebell Gold Mines says it's committed to working with the Maroons to foster sustainable development. Besides education and healthcare, the company also promised to create jobs for local people. But it's unlikely a few new jobs will be enough. In the past, Thousands have scratched a meager living from small-scale gold mining. Here, another environmental crisis looms. What began as subsistence gold panning has run out of control. With the arrival of more than 10,000 Brazilian immigrants, or garimperos, mining for subsistence has given way to mining for profit. Pouring more than 20 metric tons of mercury into local waterways every year, these illegal gold miners are seen by environmentalists as one of the biggest threats to the delicate ecology of Suriname's rainforest. Excessive logging, poaching and unchecked gold mining is reckoned to account for ever-growing stretches of severely degraded forest. Lack of human resources and the right laws make it difficult for the government to properly control these illegal activities. Suriname doesn't have any specific environmental legislation yet. We do have some sector legislation where you have environment related articles. For something to move, uh, a problem needs to be evident. Since we are so small in population, you don't really experience, uh, experience environmental problems, although there are, of course, but the country is so big, if, yeah, if you don't really see a problem or experience a problem, uh, things are not really moving on. For the government now, it's easier to focus on environmental monitoring of multinational projects carried out by legitimate international companies. The first step is really to crush the stone to get a kind of powder, like a flour, things like that. We're sending a, a mix of water and that flour in those big tanks. It will be mixed with uh, some chemical product. We will use cyanide, cyanide in contact. Gold in contact with cyanide will become uh, liquid. The final product is uh, a block of gold. Cyanide has caused problems for Cambio before. In 1995, in neighboring Guyana, a dam for collecting cyanide leaked over a billion liters of the poison into the nearby Omai Creek. 
Cambio says that the ecosystem of the Omai Creek was quickly restored. The company now has environmental monitoring systems in place that are certified and in strict conformity with World Bank guidelines. But the Maroons near Rosebell gold mines are alarmed and fear a catastrophe. For Suriname, it's a question of balancing environmental and social risks against economic growth. And the realities of global markets force poor countries to make choices in the search for a solution to the country's poverty. As eco-tourism is up some peaks that, and the gold price dalt, I can imagine that you in a certain period more eco-tourism up. And it is best possible that at some point, everyone says, "No, I stay home and the gold price stays." Dus het is moeilijk om een afweging, direct een afweging te maken. Het is, daarom zeg ik het zelf ook maar vraag en aanbod. Uh, we hebben veel, we hebben ontzettend veel bos. Maar als je met duizenden hectares tegelijk uh, dat uitdeelt, als je het aan tien mensen doet, nou, dan ben je ook alweer een kwart van je, van je woud kwijt. Dus ik denk dat we er heel zuinig mee moeten omgaan. Ik geloof niet dat, uh, dat we het ons kunnen permitteren om ook dit stukje uh, maagdelijk bos uh, te verliezen. We kunnen het ons niet permitteren. Ik vraag me af of we echt zitten te wachten op deze giganten, hè, die, die, die investeerders. Of dat we het toch op een andere manier zouden moeten doen. Cornelie Oliveira decided to take action. Working from a base in the capital, the women's business group helps maroon communities in the Brocopondo district near the Rosebell gold mine. We believe in social entrepreneurship. The people the eyes open for possibilities, resources that they have in their own environment and to get their income from there. In Class Creek, northeast of the Rosebell gold mine, Corneli and her group are helping to promote and export traditional maroon handicrafts. All profits go back to the community. Most women in Class Creek spend their time designing textiles. With the help of the women's business group, they found a ready market throughout the Caribbean. They also plan to tap the Maroons' vast knowledge of medicinal plants and woodworking. Een probleem wat de vrouwen uh, steeds uh, naar voren brachten was het feit dat ze niet echt een ruimte hadden waar ze bij elkaar konden komen om. Uh, hun borduurwerk te doen. Ze deden het allemaal in hun huizen. En je kent die huizen. Uh, daar wonen ze normaal iets met 10, 15 mensen in. Heel klein, één, één ruimte. En uh, je begreep dat, er, uh, dat het borduurwerk er echt onder ging leiden. Het werd, ik kreeg het besmeurd terug of, of gekreukt. Of weet je, niet, niet echt netjes. Motivated by the plight of the Maroons, Corneli has raised funds to build a community centre and training facility. This small step has brought Maroon communities together to learn how to unlock the economic potential of their cultural and ecological resources. Dit is het het show object nu hè voor het dorp. Dus ik denk dat er veel mensen naartoe zullen komen als men de waarde ervan. Onderkennen. En denk ik dat het heel goed uh, kan worden ingezet. Misschien kunnen we zelfs uit de stad trainingen hiervoor zorgen, weet je, die gaan over het binnenland. Maar die dus niet expliciet uh, voor deze dorpen bestemd zijn. Maar dat je dus uh, ontwikkelingswerkers hier naartoe brengt en de ruimte verhuurt. Mijn, uh, mijn commerciële geest steekt weer op de, de kop op. If economic initiatives like Cornelis give tribal people new, sustainable ways to earn a living, perhaps the far-sighted vision of Suriname's conservationists over 50 years ago could pay off yet again. Yeah, ja, helaas zien ons uh, beleidsmakers het niet. Maar wij, wij hebben nooit, wij, hebben, wij zien de revenues er niet van. Het Surinaamse volk ziet de voordelen er niet van. Suriname heeft een enorme potentie. De, het ecotourisme begint een beetje aan te trekken. Um, de Marons die hebben heel veel aan te bieden. Ze hebben een hele rijke cultuur, de inheemse idem dito. Ik denk dat het uh, de hele wereld um, kan dienen.
laat de Nederlands eerlijk zijn met de mensen van Benderland. Want Benderland staat nog steeds onder de traktaten. Is niet verbroken. Maar Nederland is bang. Hij is een grote, hij is een grote land, maar hij is bang. Die politieke zijn ook bang om te, om te komen praten. Laten we eens aan tafel komen. Suriname has, uh, has really uh, gotten a pretty good green image over the past five or six years with the creation of this big reserve. And I hope that the, this government and future governments will see fit to follow that pattern. I am not really bang that at a given moment that the tree growth in Suriname is not going to be able to stand. The fact that we a great part of the tree growth is going to be able to the world, then it me a guarantee that the tree growth is not going to be able to stand. Lang, lang. Generaties naar mij zijn bestaan.